Today in Growing STEM, we are traveling back thousands of years to discover the connection between STEM and Native Americans. That deep culture started our understanding on how the environment works and experimentation to make it work better. Now that relationship with STEM is still growing today. Science and technology and mathematics is inherent in the culture and, and life ways of American Indian people. Talon Silverhorn teaches visitors to Hale Farm and Village how people lived thousands of years ago here in Ohio. On display for Native American Cultural Weekend, examples of weaving, metalwork, and other disciplines all rooted in STEM. They developed uh, understandings of the medicines and the compounds that they could use to heal themselves, what they could eat, what they could not eat, the tools that were available to them in the, in the natural environment, and then from there building on that and building a lifestyle that we inherited as modern Native people. One example, the knowledge needed to make stone tools. Once you understand the geometry of that silica bonding, you can make a stone tool out of any silica based material or the chemistry it takes to dye the yarn dandelions give you a green yellow color while onion skins result in a brown yellow there's a bunch of them here at Hale farm and so some of the ladies were using red red ochre that one you got to make sure you have enough in order to get a nice red or it's just going to come out orange from culture to career what is being done to get Native Americans in STEM today? We try to tell our kids that like we were the first scientists, right? So this is in your DNA, this is part of who you are, this is part of our culture and tradition, right? Sarah Echohawk is the CEO of the American Indian Science and Engineering Society. They work with schools and tribes to get Native Americans into the STEM workforce, exposing kids to the possibilities, like at this recent engineering fair, and following them into college. What we're trying to do is definitely get them prepared, hopefully get them those classes that they need to have so that they are prepared to undertake a STEM major and then support them financially and also emotionally and socially while they're in college. It is definitely an honor to represent Native Americans on the International Space Station. What Echo Hawk calls the Native worldview is growing. Just last year, Nicole Mann became the first female Native American astronaut and became a role model for the younger generations. And that's that interconnectedness and understanding that everything is connected. They come from a collective viewpoint. So when they're viewing problems and thinking about how to solve problems, they're thinking about it from a collective standpoint rather than an individual standpoint. And that is unique. A growing legacy of Native Americans in STEM, whether cooking three sister soup with corn, beans, and squash, or walking in space. I see that as a continuation of the astronomical understandings of our ancestors looking at the sky and wondering, you know, how these things up there work. It's so incredible, the contributions from Native Americans from thousands of years ago and how we still are dependent upon their science and technology and engineering today. Well, according to Echo Hawk, there is still a long way to go. She says in the U.S., women alone hold one out of every five jobs in STEM fields. And the percentage of those women who are Native American is just a small fraction of that certainly needs Imagine. more fostering, more growth, get more girls out there and we'll get to more diverse fields for all of our, our STEM excellence and, and <laughs> getting it moving forward. It, it